Hey family, how you doing? Welcome to another video and happy Friday to you this, at the time of me um, uploading this video. I hope you guys had a great week. And, um, and if you didn't, well, you got the weekend, you know, and the fact that you're alive, trust me, you had a pretty good weekend. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so glad that you guys can join me. Hey, let me tell you something. I, I, mm. Why are people surprised? Why, why are people surprised? I, I don't understand this. I, I, I don't get this. It's anyway, anyway, let me, let me, let me bring you in all the way into my thoughts. Okay. On what am I, what am I talking about? Now, many of you have already by now, you know, if you fit in the demographic of those that um, follow this channel here, this platform, um, you've heard of William Murphy. Now, I can recall William Murphy all the way back, uh, back in the days where my family and I attended um, New Birth in Atlanta. In Atlanta. This is when... Um, Eddie L. Long was alive and all of that. This is years ago. Uh, William Murphy came on board there in, in that ministry as a worship leader. And, um, and it's funny when you're in the church world, it's funny because you watch how different people come in and it's, it's really like a career move. Like if you get with a certain size church, you know, um, I'm talking about like if you're like a, a worship leader, it's usually like the next thing, you know, that's like you'll get albums and stuff like that. And then later on, then you open up a church and now you're a bishop. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but it usually that's the case. You start off singing and then from singing, it turns into you go from a singer to me and a bishop. But he's not the only one. There's a whole line of them. Um, but I remember um, he and is another um guy some time ago uh darwin hobbs and he's still i think around singing as well but he was also another uh person that um he was a worship leader at new birth and then from there he you know blew up and had his own you know ministry and did all that stuff right um and there's someone else who's quite a few people that came through that church and uh started off as uh um uh, worship leaders and then they went on about whatever it is that they they're doing now singing and, and in this case William Murphy now he's Bishop William Murphy right so anyway um by now you already know that um I guess it was New Year's Eve you know like a many church like many churches they had you know black people we call it watch night you know but it's New Year's Eve and then you do your countdown and then after that then you you know Welcome into the new year. You know, usually they pray and then immediately after they pray, they take their offering. Oh, they're going to take that offering now. Now it's so funny because I was uh, watching, um, cause you know, we were up and then I, I said, you know, I, you know, like every new year's, I like to see what other people are doing. And I saw Marvin Winans, his church was doing a new year's Eve thing and it was live. It was on YouTube. I was like, Oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe I can hear him saying or whatever. And he's saying just a tiny bit, you know, and uh, but when that clock struck 12, <laughs> the first thing he said is, as we welcome into the new year, walk in blessed, you know, give t at least twenty four dollars. You knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. They always tie it to to the, the year, the date, the year, um, the number year. In this case, it was twenty four. You better get more. <laughs> That's probably what it was. But yeah, for him, he was saying 24, you know, at least $24. You want to give in, right? You want to give in. You want to enter in blessing to be a blessing, you know, all of that stuff. Right. You know, you know how we do. And so, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for the, um, all the, you know, the, the, the quotes, you know, the, from coming from the churches, uh, 2024, the year we go for more and you know, whatever, you know, I kind of like that one though. But anyway, um, maybe for them is the year we get more. Maybe that's what it is for them. But anyway, anyway, anyway. So, um, so anyway, so this whole situation, what happened basically for those who aren't the very few that don't know his church, um, I'm talking about, uh, William Murphy, they 
welcomed in the new year by doing some some dance or whatever. You can look it up. I don't care. Don't know these people. It was some group. What's the article? I think I had the article up here, so I don't look too uh, dad aged. <laughs> okay, so let me see. I actually have the article here, so you know that way I I ain't sounding too out of date here. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so the name of his church is the, the Dream Center of Atlanta. And uh, let's see here. So they said uh, for his New Year Eve service, Bishop William Murphy counted down the clock for the t- to 2024 with a medley of contemporary hip hop songs, including Fast Life Youngsters 2009 single Swag Surfing. Um, let's see. Murphy and his con- uh, congregants did the popular swag surfing dance as they cut as the cut from the Stone Mountain, Georgia based uh, group piped through the facility. And then it goes on. Okay. So y'all saw the video. I don't need to play it because, you know, I, you know, you have folks out here going after TD Jakes, you know, and the allegations that are out there about him and TD Jakes and his ministry, they're not playing. They are not playing. They've been going after any channel out here that's been post reposting some video that's up with him or whatever. And he's been putting strikes on there. So I don't need to play <laughs> William Murphy's any, any of his videos, but you know, you know, you can catch up on your own. And so there's this video of them doing this swag surfing thing or whatever. And they're playing the song or whatever. And that's it. I saw it and was like, I didn't think I literally didn't think nothing of it. Literally. Like it's one of those things that pop up on your, on your um your timeline and i'm just scrolling and i saw it and i was like oh, okay, okay whatever and i didn't think nothing of it still don't but i saw what i saw in response is people like how dare you do this in the house of god you know how dare you do this in the house of god is there any respect how dare he even brings this into the house of god that belongs in a club. You literally turned the club into a into a um a nightclub. You turn. Oh, I got it mixed up, didn't I? You literally turned the church into a nightclub, and you know that is not holy. That we're supposed to be set apart. The Bible says we're supposed to come out from among them and be separate. And we're not supposed to bring the world into the church, but the church is supposed to go out to the world and all of that, right? And I'm sitting back and it was, I'm looking at it, I like looking at different people and how they react and respond to things because that to me is the, is really where it's good TV for me, <laughs> you know, to really watch the people, not so much the action, but I really like watching the people, you know? And so I'm watching these different groups here you know you got the churchy people right the people who are in the church they're still part of the church system well they're pissed off they're mad you know about this and this is desecrating the holy temple or whatever and i'm it's a church built okay owned by the bank but anyway um yeah we yeah that um so i'm watching them and i'm like okay all right well that's understandable you know if you've been in the church for 10 years or whatever you may feel some kind of way i get that right but i think the thing that really stood out to me was the reaction from people who have left so allegedly left the church a long time ago and they still mad and they still all up in their feelings about it I mean, I'm talking about individuals who all they do is talk about the church is Babylon and you got to come out. You got to flee Babylon. You got to get out of Babylon. It's Babylon. It's Babylon. It's Babylon. Ah! You know, it's they just, woo. okay, we get it. You get the people got to get out of Babylon. You got to get out of it. We on this platform have said to people, you definitely need to get up out of there, period. But if that's your choice to stay there, that's up to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? But whatever goes happens in the church is what happens, period. And what we do on this platform a lot of times, every now and then when the story comes up, because, you know, we talk a little bit about everything, right? And so if there's one I think is a note, I'll mention it, and that's it. And I'll just keep it moving. That's it. 
but I don't have any kind of emotional tie to it. You understand what I'm saying? When I'm listening to some of these people, it's almost as if they expect better. Walk with me on this for a second. It's almost as if you expect them not to do that. And you're like, it's almost like you demand them to be quote unquote better and not to do certain things. Now, wait a minute now. You spend all of this time saying how the church or the church system is Babylon, is evil, is wicked and all this stuff. Okay, fine. You made the choice to leave then, but why is your heart still connected to it? And that's what you're hearing from a lot of these people. They invest a lot of time in saying, condemning the church and the church system. But yet when something like this happens, it's almost like they are disappointed as if, you know, why, why did you do this? You know, you got to do better. We can't do what? It's the church. What else do you expect? You know, black folks, we got to start being honest with ourselves here. You know, we talk about on this platform all the time, to the best of our ability, we got to be pursuers of truth, period. And that's what we're going to do here. Just, just for a minute, a few more minutes, if you allow me. Because I, when I think about, you know, when we're talking about the church, right? And let's talk specifically about the black church. Now, first and foremost, let's be clear here. Most churches that are in existence today, especially if they've been built within the last 10, 15, maybe 20 years, most of those churches are still owned by the bank. Okay. Which means how can it be holy? In other words, what I'm trying to say is you think, believe, but the, what I'm trying to say, just follow me. Stop interrupting me. Anyway, I'm just playing. What I'm trying to say is this. You build a building and you compare it to what is described in the Bible as the Holy of Holies. But when you read the Bible, there's no nothing at all in all those instructions that was given to Solomon and all those instructions that was given to Moses now one of them said Bank of America. Now one of them said any of these other banks that are out here. And make sure after you get the wood now, make sure you go down to the bank. Make sure you get that loan. No. Oh. It's owned by the bank. So that's number one. I'm, I'm trying to walk you through so you can understand where I'm coming from here. So that's number one. It's a building that's owned by the bank. That's number one. Now let's talk about the people, shall we? Let's talk about the people. We have developed this thing when it comes to the church, going to church every Sunday, as if the people that go in there have no knowledge at all about any of the music outside of Christian or gospel music. We don't have any knowledge. You don't have any knowledge of that at all. No, none. Michael, who? Michael Jack, who? What? Who's that? Oh, I don't know him. I know Shirley Caesar, though. You know, as if there's no knowledge of any artist or anything like that at all. There's no knowledge at all. And don't you dare mention their name up in here. You know, now y'all can do all that stuff out there, but don't you dare mention any of these um, um, artists out here. You know, don't, don't mention them. Kanye, what, who? Don't you dare mention it. Now, now if Kanye does a gospel album, then we'll invite him. I know he lets his wife walk around butt naked, you know, but he came to the church and did a gospel album. That's all we care about because he's bringing in the money and the clicks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it, it, notice how we, the church is, it goes on a dime. They flip on a dime, right? I'm just, we're just walking through this, okay? And so, so you got that. Then you got, okay, so the people... We're, act, we're pretending as if nobody knows of any of these artists out here. That's number one, right? Number two, the people themselves. Let's talk about the people themselves even more. Do you really think that the people that are coming into this place are 100% holy and not 
and ain't engaged in anything at all, it don't tell me to all have sinned and fallen short because folk done burnt that scripture out. If you want to burn anything, anything that's been burnt out completely is that one, that scripture right there. People done took that thing and barbecued it and then barbecued it again and then put it in a George Foreman. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, you know, brother, all has sinned. We all done messed up. The very people that use that scripture have been using that scripture. They use it over and over again to justify the ongoing circus of sin or, or mistakes or whatever you want to call it, bad decisions that they've made in their lives. And they continue to make. Well, you know, brother, you can't say anything to me. The Bible says judge not. You can't judge me for anything. Hey, we all, there ain't none of us up in here perfect up in here. So what's being acknowledged is that you got folks in these churches that ain't living the life that you, that most of them talk about. Okay. We're just kind of doing a, a re we're just going over notes that have already been written down. Okay. And then we're going to bring this to a conclusion. So you got folks that are doing all kinds of stuff in the church, right? All kinds of stuff. Let's get back to the music part for a second. Now, for someone like myself, I, you know, who've had many years of experience in the church, I can tell you stories after stories, like many of you, you know, where a lot of those musicians that you'll find, you know, performing in the church, they're on pay, they on salary. And when I say on salary, not that that's a, you know, whatever, but they on salary or whatever, but they'll, these are musicians that the night before were playing somewhere else or playing for some secular artist. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, in many of these large churches, the musicians that play on stage, many of them also play with secular artists. Look it up. All you got to do is ask. That's nothing new. In fact, the secular world goes to the church to find their musicians. This is nothing new, family. Nothing at all. Okay, so you got that going on. And then you know, you know what, where they come from because, you know, they always like to leave a little signature, if you will. They like to little, throw a little uh, uh, old school or something. Doing, and you always hear it during offering time. You know, during offering time, you hear the, you know, you be up there like, you know, they play one song, you know, um, whatever gospel music song or whatever they're playing. You know, I was glad when they said unto me, whatever, they they playing some song. And then all of a sudden the organist or the keyboard artist or whatever, they do one little riff that's like a, a, a it's like a a, a a quick flash, the cameo. <laughs> and then you be like, what, what did I just hear? And then they'll turn back and you'll be like, Oh, oh, I, th I thought I heard Cammy. I thought I heard Candy. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Y'all know, don't be at looking at me like you don't know. Yeah, many of these musicians, they do that all the time. All the time. I remember years ago, again, this was back at Re New Birth. Um, this was not in the building that they're in now, but it was the older building on, ah, uh, I can't think of the name of the road, but it's it's like a few exits away from where they are now. Uh, what was the name of that road? Anyway, um, but yeah, this was when we first moved to Atlanta, and then we um, when I first moved to Atlanta, we went there, and I can still see it now. I think I was was I sitting on the stage? I can't remember where we were sitting, but anyway, they got up there and was like singing some praise song or, or worship song or whatever, right? And then all of a sudden I heard doom, 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 doom. He's the Messiah. Oh, I can hear him when he walks. Even when he talks, his spirit takes all. You got to fit it all in. I'm serious. This is nothing. Y'all, y'all people. I'm sitting up here like I'm looking at all this stuff that I see today about William Murphy. And I'm like. People acting like this is some brand new stuff. This has been going on. It's nothing new. <laughs> it's nothing new. They do this stuff all the time. But let's get even a little bit deeper. 
Many of these churches that we're talking about that we're so concerned, oh my God, they're, they're corrupting these churches and oh my God, they're bringing all of this, this secular music in here. Many of the churches that you'll find in places like Atlanta were built on the backs of strippers. Whoa, what are you talking about? That's right. Strippers do go to church, you know. Strippers make a lot of money. Atlanta's a big spot when it comes to strippers. Many of those churches benefit from what strippers make. Oh, we don't want to go there, do we? We don't want to talk about that, do we? Mm -mm, no, we don't want to go there. Many of the churches that you'll find in places like Atlanta and other places were built on the backs of people who are sleeping around with people they ain't married with. Oh, we don't want to talk about that, do we? We don't want to talk about that. Many of the churches in Atlanta are built on the backs of people who abuse children. We don't want to talk about that either, do we? No, oh, we don't want to deal with that. You understand? We, we, don't, we, we don't want to deal with that. Nah, nah. No, 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 no. Because all those people are holy. See, what happens is when you, but, 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 brother, brother, my brother, but when you give your money, what happens is it goes through a holy wash. And then the holiness of the church, it sanctifies the money and it makes it sanctified and holy. And so it's okay. Yes, yes, that's all right. If it's coming from people who strip or sleep around with other people they ain't married to or mess around with children, it don't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Because when the church gets our hands on it, we make it holy. Family, y'all acting like, folk acting like this is some brand new something that I'm talking about. This, you know as well as I know, this has been the normal fare of things when it comes to the church, particularly the black church. It ain't nothing new, nothing at all new. So that's why I'm sitting back here and I'm watching people putting out all these videos on TikTok, on YouTube and all of that and how dare this happens. The only reason why most, the vast majority of these people are reacting the way they are is because of the fact that the video itself, for whatever reason, went viral by people who refuse or just are plain ignorant of the stuff that I just shared with you just now. It goes on all the time. Dancing to a quote unquote secular song is the least amount of things that are going on in the church. But here's the thing that this is where we bring it now. Now, again, I personally, when I left the church, when we left the church system, I left it. So I don't, when I see a pastor doing something like, you know, dancing or whatever to a secular song, it's, I don't care about that. I don't. It ain't, it ain't worthy enough for me to, y'all, we're going to have to talk about this and how dare it. I don't care. See, this video right here is being made for people like you who do. And what I'm trying to ask, I'm trying to figure out is why do you? If you claim that I left the church and you know you don't fled Babylon and all that, then why are you expecting Babylon to be any better than what you've already said it is? I don't understand that. You understand? In other words, the people that are there now, they're there because they want to be there. And they're going to always be there if that's what they want. And if that's what they want, then so be it. But just know that what we as a people have done when it comes to the church, we got to stop this lying and trying to portray the church being something that it really isn't. It's just a the church is really just a place where, you know, the drinking and the cussing and the smoking don't happen. You understand what I'm saying? But the drinkers and the smokers and the cussers, they there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you acting like just because they don't take place there, that don't mean that the people, they lose their their, their memory of those things. No, they're still there. <laughs> you act, what, what's up? <laughs> I don't understand. 
So yeah, it's the same thing. So we got to stop this imaginative stuff when it comes to, you know, the case of this church situation. Well, we did a video. Um, I was talking about a number of things. One of the things I brought up, I think I talked about, I mentioned, um, oh, what was in um, Kirk Franklin? I think he had some, he had an open bar at his, um, at one of his concerts or whatever. These people been active. You, you think, do you expect, you expected something else? Do you understand what I'm saying? And see, this is where at the end of the day, this is what I'm talking about. Are you really committed to truth? Are you really? Or are you just just want to play games and just want to lie and just be all like, oh my God, what are they doing to the church? I left the church a long time ago, so I ain't I ain't there no more. But as soon as you hear something like this, you're like, oh my God, what did they do? Why are you concerned about that? If you left, you left. A lot of people, and this is what we were saying, I have been saying, uh, you know, when we, you know, when I was in the Hebrew space, I said, you know, you got a lot of people up in here that may have physically left the church, but they have not left the church. They brought all the baggage. They brought all the mindsets. They brought all of that with them as well. And it, in this particular case, this this little story was quite interesting. The William Murphy saga, <laughs> you know, that popped up. It exposed all of these people that spent all of this time talking about how bad the church is and how you need to get out of it. But the moment something like this happens, now all of a sudden, they're like, oh, this is just... Oh, this is just such a shame. It's just so wrong. It's so wrong. It's so wrong that this is happening, that they're actually dancing to a secular song in the church. Why are you worrying about it? <laughs> Why you left? I thought you left. Why are you worrying about it? You understand what I'm saying? I thought you done moved on, but apparently you didn't. Apparently you still con- you're still concerned and, and care very much about that system a whole lot. I don't, I don't, you know, when here, what we do is we, you know, we talk to people from all over, you know, you're in the church, you're in a, you know, mosque or whatever. I don't care. I really don't care. We are about truth at the end of the day. And that's what we're in pursuit of. But the first step is you got to learn to be honest with yourself. A lot of these people that you're out here listening to, I don't care what label they put on themselves. That church thing is still on them. It is. And they just bring it right along with them. They may flip the script a little bit. They may rename certain things, but oh baby, they pretty much, they all church. That's why they freak out when stuff like that happens in the church. That's the same thing with the TDJ saying, I was like, okay, and what? You know, he's the only one. We did a video a long time ago where we actually talked about Kojic, the entire Kojic denomination. You want to talk about the Catholic church and how they move bishops and, and, and you know, around and, and, and priests around when they get um, caught messing around with little children. Kojic has a long history of that, a very long history of that, a very long and documented history of of doing that kind of stuff. Kojic does. Yes, they do. So we got to get it. So if you're really one that's about the truth, you're going to have to first start being honest about a lot of things. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't say you left something and then all of a sudden you about to fall out when that thing you left, you still like, but, but I still love it. I still love it. No, you, if you leave, if you go on, you're gone. And we can mention it if it's a newsworthy item or whatever, if it's something, whatever, certainly if it's some crime or something, if it's like a crime story or something like that, you know, we'll mention it, you know, if I feel like it or whatever, but I don't lose any sleep over these people because you should know by now what the system is already about. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, you know, like I said, trust me, dancing ain't, it's the least of the things that are going on in that system. And this is why we tell people all the time and we go through a number of cases and a number of reasons and a number of examples as to why our people should just, you need to get up out of there, period. But 
You know, some people, they're just very comfortable, you know, in that space. And so be it. But our responsibility is just to tell you the truth. And that's it. And we got to and we got to be truthful about this stuff, including how we view the church and stop trying to and stop projecting our imagination on something when we know it's just a load of crap, basically. OK, so I mean, I think that's all I got to say on that. But thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. You guys take care. Enjoy the rest of your day and rest of your week. And um, yeah, we'll be talking again soon. OK, take care now.